Greetings again, everyone. It's time for another three-way conversation between you, me, and Search for a Nonviolent Future. Uh, we were talking about the transformation that enables a person to generate nonviolent power and uh, that we could say something about how that happens. And I was about to say, and will say now, that there's a rather interesting paradox, which uh, I was not aware of, I think, when I wrote these pages. The paradox is that on the one hand, in order for this peak experience, this generating of nonviolent power to happen, you have to rise above yourself. But on the other hand, being nonviolent means being more of yourself, that the person, the individual, is never uh, oppressed or deleted in nonviolence the way we often are in violence. To do violence, you have to put on uniforms and follow orders and so on and so forth. Think of the way that a, a, a dictator tries to impose uniformity and obliterate individuality. They always do that. Diversity is anathema to dictators. Well, nonviolence is the exact opposite. We want to uh, bring out the person in his or her full personhood. And paradoxically, that happens when the person decides to rise above themselves and look down at their own uh, private agenda. Now, there's a way to explain this paradox, and that is that we are not the separate person that we think we are. So that this is Ubuntu, when we involve ourselves in the well-being of others positively, making a contribution to their well-being, we become more ourself. Our real self is a self with others, not a self by ourselves. Uh, and so uh, I talk about uh, uh, a woman who was a, a mugged, uh, uh, Eileen Egan, and how she rose above personal vindictiveness and how beneficial that was for her. And then I talk about something that happened or something was noticed during the Philippine uprising in 1986, which is, and now I'm quoting from one of the uh, prominent religious figures who was very helpful in that movement. He said, it was amazing. It was two million independent decisions. Each one said in his heart, I will do this. And they went out. Now, this led uh, eventually for the Meta Center to coin the term person power, because people had talked about, in fact, this revolution is called a people power revolution because of the power of the people versus the power of the state. But in looking to the roots of principled nonviolence, we always have to get down to the individual person. And therefore, it is really person power because that change uh, that spiritual intoxication, it can overcome a group, but it has to happen inside the soul of the individual person. So again, that's an interesting uh, slant on our paradox. More next time as we continue and wrap up the whole idea of what elicits nonviolent power from an individual. Till then.